All right, so let's get started. We're going to do 2.6 first. And the things that we learn in 2.6 are actually going to be the stuff that we're going to do in 2.7 also, but with a different function. All right, so we're going to talk about some parent functions today. Parent functions. And we're going to learn three parent functions. We're going to do two of them in 2.6 and the other one in 2.7. Um, bless yes, bless you. Yeah, we're going to have some children from the parents. Um, for, for this, we do three parent functions. In, in honors of advanced math, if you ever plan on taking that next year, uh, we actually have 12 parent functions that we have, and they have to memorize them. What we're going to do is we're going to take these parent functions, they're in their basic, most simplest form, and we're going to move them around. We're going to reflect them. We're going to shift them. We're going to stretch them, all kinds of things, okay? All right, so um, here are our two basic parent functions. This is our little introduction, and here they are. So f of x is equal to x. That is the most simple line you could ever imagine. Slope is 1, y-intercept is 0, and that is a parent function. So this is just the graph, and you have to know this graph, like off the top of your head. Um, you can plug in, you know, plug in 1 for x, you'll get 1 for y. Plug in 2 for x, you'll get 2 for y, so on and so forth. So what you get is you just get this basic line. It's the diagonal that goes through your graph, okay? So that is a parent function. That's a pretty boring one. We don't use that one too much. And the other parent function that we're going to do more from is this one f of x equals x squared. Okay, so let's get some actual points on this graph. So if I were going to make a t-chart in my head, if I wanted to find out what y was when x is 0, I plug 0 in and I get 0, 0 as one point. I can plug in x is 1, and when I square 1, I get 1. Okay, it's looking like the last one I just graphed, but there's this squared, so that's going to make things change a lot. Um, if I plug in 2 for x, what's my y value? 4. So 1, 2, th one, two 3, 4. I'm up here now, OK? And things are going to get even steeper. What if I go over to this side? If I plug in negative 1 and I square negative 1, I get positive 1. If I square negative 2, I get positive 4. So the graph of this is a, does anyone know, starts with a p. Parabola. Parabola, good. You were? Oh, that's good. This is really bad. That's good. No, you should have said it. We wouldn't make fun of you if you were wrong. Maybe your jerky friends would, but I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, so you need to know those two basic shapes. All right, those are our parent functions. Some people like to call them mother functions. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take these parent functions and we're going to apply some shifts on them. Shifts. Yes. Holy shift. Look at that mother function. <laughs> what? I didn't say something wrong? No? Oh, good, good. All right, here we go. I should back to the story. All right. Uh, we're going to do some shifting now, and we're going to shift uh, two different ways. We're going to shift our graphs vertically, vertical shifts, and horizontal shifts. All right. So for any function, any f of x, um, this is how a vertical shift will happen on your graph. Okay? A vertical shift will look like this. If you take your function f of x and you add a constant k to it. What that does is that takes your entire graph, like it takes your parabola, and it shifts it up k amount. So if I had a parabola f of x equals x squared plus 5, it would take this graph right here, and it would move it up to 5 instead. OK? That's what it does. And that's true for any function. So this is going to go up k units, up k. It looks like up. All right. so. 
Over here, if I have f of x minus k, that's going to take my entire function and shift it down k. All right, and people were pretty good about those. That one's not so hard, makes sense. We're taking all the y values and adding a number to them so it's moving everything up. The horizontal ones are the ones that people kind of struggle with. Um, the horizontal looks like this. Horizontal affects the x, not the y, because you're going left and right. So it's going to be f of x plus h on the inside of the function, bless you. So if we were shifting a squared on the inside, then it would all be in the inside of the parentheses with the squared on top of it. But here's the thing. When you shift plus h, you, actu you actually go left h. Yes, it is interesting. And if you do x minus h, you're going to go to the right h. Okay, so for these up and down, you go exactly the same way that it looks to you in your graph. For left and right, you want to think the opposite. Okay, you want to think, how am I going to make y zero? What would make y zero in a way? So let's do some. Are you ready? Zero to zero makes a lot. Too bad. Wyatt. Number one. <coughs> All right, let's do some vertical shifts. Just vertical first. Vertical. So let's take... Um, Let's take our parent function, y equals x, and let's go ahead and just add a number to this. Let's graph y equals x plus 3. Okay. So we're going to take our, our graph, y equals x. Um, here's the parent function. You don't have to graph the parent function every time. Some people like to. I like to say, okay, that's where I'm starting. And now I'm going to take this graph right here, and I'm going to move the whole thing up 3. One, two, three, and there it is. That's the graph I'm looking for. Now, the other thing is, you might look at this and go, oh, but wait a minute. Isn't this a shift of three horizontally to the left? Actually, it did that too. One, two, three. Pretty cool, huh? Wow. I know. All right, let's look at it now for a, that was letter A, for a parabola. Let's take our parent function, y equals x squared, and let's take that, and we're going to actually graph y equals x squared minus 4. y equals x squared minus 4. Okay, so you can start with your basic parent function. When you graph these, I need at least three points, though, okay? Three points. So here are the easiest three points to remember, 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. And don't forget to make a U shape. So there's our U shape. And we're going to take that graph right there. It's like almost like it's on your computer screen and you've got your mouse and you click on it and you move it down the computer screen. Okay? You're not changing the shape of it. You're not going left, right. You're just going down four units. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot there. Does anyone know what that point is called on our vertex? Uh, oh, I just said it. Dang it. On our vertex? <laughs> on our parabola, it's called a vertex. Can you what? Uh, yeah, you can go for a tardy. All right. But you really got to go. You go. There you go. There it is. That's not so bad, right? It's a quick way to graph a parabola. It's just a parabola that's been shifted down four. Now, let's look at our other ones. Number two. Let's look at our horizontal shifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. You're, you're really just disruptive anyway, so <laughs> go ahead, though. All right. Here we go. Let's do a horizontal shift. Let's have y equals x squared, and let's graph y equals x minus 2 squared. Okay. Do you see the difference? between the last ones and this one. See how this minus 2 is inside the function with the x? See how the last one, this minus 4, was outside of that x? This is an up and down shift, and this is a horizontal shift. Now, you have to remember, we are shifting the opposite way that you think, OK? This minus 2 means that we have to shift everybody to the right. All right, so you start with your parent function again. There it is. 
and we're going to take that and move it two to the right. And like I said, you don't have to draw that every time. I like to, just to show you what we're starting with. And we're going to go one, two, and then it's just up one and over one in each direction. And if you're working with graph paper, it's a lot better. And there it is, two to the right. All right, now let's do both. Let's do a shift of both, vertically and horizontally. Wow, look, it's raining. Okay. Oh, coming. It's so fun. Yeah, it didn't show rain. I know. It didn't show rain to me either, because my kids asked me, like, what's the weather like? All right, so let's do x plus 3 squared plus 2. Okay, let's put it all together now. All together now. So we're going to take our basic parabola. I'm doing mostly parabolas because the lines are kind of dumb, so I like to kind of focus on the parabola. We're going to take our basic parabola here. Ooh, I missed. Let's try that again. There it is, sort of. Okay, and we're going to take this thing and we're going to shift it, which directions, plural? Three to the left, to the left, and two up. Three to the left, do you like Beyonce, Fraley? Fraley. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> One, two. Did I say it right? I've been practicing. I do. I sit there and I'm like, freely, 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 freely. <laughs> in my car on my way to work, freely, 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 freely. And I get here, I'm all, what's up, freely? <laughs> Dang it. Okay. It is fun. You try it. You do? You do too? We all do. We all do. Number three. Number three. Okay. Now, those are the graphs. Those are the graphs. I think that you, you, you get the outside part moves up and down, inside the function, left and right, opposite. <coughs> now, what if I started with, it's fun, right? Freely, 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 every day. Y equals x squared minus 1. Okay, here is a function. We're not going to graph this. We're not going to graph it. But here's a function. It's already been shifted a certain way. And what we're going to do is we are going to shift it even more. But we're not going to draw the graph of it. We're going to write the equation if we translate this function up five units. <coughs> okay? So if I, was, if I were to take y equals x squared minus 1, and I'm going to take that graph, and I'm going to move that one up five units, what would the new equation be for that graph? Oh. Yes. Did you hear him? He said foe. <laughs> foe, foe. Okay. Uh, y equals x squared minus 1. When you shift something up 5, you're basically just adding 5 to the end of the function, right? That's what it means to shift something up. You take the function, add 5 to it. So it would be y equals x squared plus 4. If I'm starting down here at negative 1, that makes sense, right? If I'm going up 5 from there, I'm at positive 4. All right, try another one, number 4. Another um, How about y equals x squared minus 2. And I want to shift this to, no, let's go three. Three to the left now. Okay, left and right are tricky. Up and down, it's not so bad. You just add it to the end of it, okay? But left and right, you have to really kind of think about it. First of all, it's going to go on the inside with the x of the squared, okay? Inside there. And then also, you have to remember that it's going to be the opposite way that you think. So if I have three to the left, yes. I'm going to write x plus 3 squared and then keep that minus 2 as is. All right? Feel pretty good? Okay, last part of this lesson, letter C. We're going to do some reflecting. What did C stand for? C? No. Reflection? There's a C in reflection. I don't know. All right, you did in geometry, you did some reflections. Um, of shapes, right? Reflecting over the y-axis, over the x-axis. We're, we're going to reflect um, our parabola and our lines, okay? So let's, let's focus on the lines, though. Now, here we go. We're going to have two reflections. 
One's going to be over the x-axis, and the other one is over the y-axis. And if your graph is reflected over the x-axis, then that means what they've done is they've taken your entire f of x and made it the opposite of what it was. Okay? They've taken all the y values and they've reflected them over the x-axis so that they're now negative. Yeah, the y-axis going from the y is you're going from the positive x's over to the negative x's. So what happens is only the x will change the sign. And those kind of look the same, and you're like, how is that even different? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you graphically and um, with uh, an equation, geographically, sure. All right, <laughs> what number around five? Number five. Okay, suppose that we have f of x equals... 3x plus 3. I want you to go ahead and graph that on your paper. Not, not using shifts or anything. Just graph it because you know how to graph a line. You know what the y-intercept is. You know what the slope is. day to drop next Friday yes do it tomorrow tomorrow tomorrow's the end of the six weeks so do it then yeah it's pretty good you've tried you tried your best for six weeks now yeah, who cares? all right here we go one two three and we'll count up three and over one okay did you graph that line yeah does it look like that yeah good all right so the y intercepts three I'm gonna go up three over one for the slope. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to reflect this over the y-axis first. So letter A. Reflect over the y-axis. Now, the y-axis is the one that goes up and down, and you have to think about a reflection as you fold your paper and it ends up on the other side of it, right? So it would look something like, ew, like this. Ah, let me start over. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Tight. Tight. Okay, so there's the reflection. Now let's talk about what happened, what changed here, what didn't change. So did our y-intercept change? No. See the blue line? My y-intercept is still 3. Okay? Uh, what about the slope? I went from a positive slope to a negative slope. Okay, so when you are reflecting over the y-axis right here, the only thing that changes is your x. So I write f of negative x equals negative 3x plus 3. That would be my equation of this blue line right here. The y-intercept doesn't change, it's still positive 3 but my slope changed from positive 3 to negative 3. So when you're reflecting over the y-axis, the only thing that changes is slope. Now let's do the same problem. Um, letter B. Let's go to a different color. Let's now reflect over the x-axis. Okay. So let's get that graph back. Same one. One, two, three, up three, <clears throat> excuse me, over one. There it is. Okay. So f of x equals 3x plus 3. All right, I'll let you catch up a minute. <coughs> and we're going to take this now, and we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So here's the x-axis right here. We're going to take all of our points and fold them over so that they're all down on the other side. All right, so this one, which is at positive 3, is now going to be down here at negative 3. Anything on the x-axis stays, and so this is what the graph would look like. Now, what has changed here? Everything changed, right? My y-intercept changed. It's now negative 3. My slope went from a positive to negative. So everything changes. That's why when you reflect over, where is it? 
the x-axis, do you see how it's going to be the opposite of your function? Well, what's the opposite of 3x plus 3? Negative 3x minus 3. So when you reflect over the x-axis, both things change, slope and y-intercept. And that's just something you have to either, you can visualize if you need to graph it and for a hint to help you, or you just remember. Reflect over the y-axis, your slope changes. Reflect over the x-axis, both slope and intercept change. Okay, so let's do one last one of these, and then we will get to the last lesson. Number six. All right, suppose you have f of x equals... 7x minus 5. We're not going to graph these. We're just going to write a rule when we reflect it over the y-axis and when it's reflected over the x-axis. Okay, and you're going to have one of these on your quiz on Monday. Oh, All right, so when we reflect over the y-axis, visualize that in your head, you'll know that... The slope's going to change for both of them, by the way. Do you notice that? Slope change for both. But when we're reflecting over the y-axis, your y-intercept does not change. So this would be negative 7x minus 5. It looks really weird. Try again. Negative 7x minus 5. Okay. When we reflect over the x-axis, what's it going to be? negative 7x, and then what? Plus 5. Okay? The x-axis, your y-intercept's going from negative 5, flipping over up to positive 5. So here, only the slope changed. For x-axis, slope and intercept both change. All right, let's do 2, 7 now. 2, 7 is going to be nice for you because it's going to take all the stuff that we just did and we're going to apply it to a new parent function called the absolute value. Absolute value graphs. <coughs> okay, so our two parent functions so far, we had a line and we have a U shape. Absolute value, I'm going to do a little intro and do an absolute value graph. Absolute value is going to kind of start by looking like both of those, and then it's going to change. It's going to look a little different. So suppose you have the absolute value of x, and we need to graph this. Let's make a little t-chart over here. OK, we'll only do this once. Once you have that t-chart done and you know the shape of it, then we're going to take that shape and shift it. So when x is 0, and I plug it in, I do the absolute value of 0, what do I get for y? 0. Absolute value of 0, 0. How about the absolute value of 1? One? 1. The absolute value of 2? Two? 2. The absolute value of negative 1? One? 1. The absolute value of negative 2? Two? 2. Okay. Let's plot those five points and see what this looks like. I've got 0, 0. That's the vertex. Uh, 1, 1. 2, 2. Okay, so, so far it looks like that line, the y equals x line. But then when I go to this side negative 1, 1, ooh, and then negative 2, 2, it's going to be that side. So that's the shape of a V. It's a V shape. Absolute value, V shape. Parabola is a U shape, okay? And that's it. That's your basic parent function right there. And what, what's that? And what we're going to do is we're going to do our up and down translations, okay? So here we go. Number one. Let's take f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 3. We're going to graph that. And number 2, we're going to graph f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, I sounded like I said the exact same thing, and I did, but they're totally different. See how the plus 3 is on the inside? And see how the plus three is 
Let's look. Yeah. One of them is a vertical shift, and the other one's horizontal. Okay? It's the same idea. But it's not, instead of taking the U shape and moving it around, we're going to take V shape and move it around. So this one is, here's my basic absolute value V shape. And what am I going to do to that? Move it. Anybody know? Take a guess. Oh, yes, I heard it. Up three. Perfect. Plus three is on the outside. You're taking the entire function and you're moving it up one, two, three. So you go up one and over one in each direction, and there's your absolute value graph. It's heavy. Heavy? How is it heavy? All right, the next one. The next one, here's our V-shape again. And this one, we're going to move three to the? Left. Yes. Three to the left. I'll go a different color. One, two, three to the left. Oh, that looks cool. It's a heavy oh, it does kind of, huh? It's nice. All right, you try this one. You try it, Fraley. Fraley. Fraley, 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 Fraley. No, because Jacob told me to how to how to say his name. All right, absolute value. Unless he's telling me it's wrong. He, wrong. he did. It's Fraley. X minus five, minus four. All right, this one has two shifts on it. Can you handle it? Can you do this one by yourself? I think you can. Do it. You can do it. One, two, three, four, five to the right. And one, two, three, four down. Okay, that's your very special point. Shh. That's the point. If you get that, you probably got it then, right? You're starting with your vertex at the origin, and you're moving it five to the right and four down. And then you just count um, up one and over one, and you draw your graph. Like that. Yay, who got that? Yes, like 12 people got that. Okay. Um, let's do a compression now. Okay, part B. Compression. Compression, this sounds kind of tough, but it's not too bad. What they're going to do is they're going to take your regular absolute value and they're going to make it skinnier or make it wider. Okay? They're going to distort the shape of it a little bit by compressing it. And what they're going to do is they're going to put a number in front of your absolute value to kind of mess with you a little bit. All right, I'll show you what happens. Um, if you have y equals a times the absolute value of x, they're going to put a is going to be a constant. It's a real number. What you're going to do is you're going to think of this as slope. And you're going to do rise over run, a over 1, or if a is a fraction, just use it as a fraction, okay? So you're going to think of this as the slope of the graph. We've been doing up 1 and over 1 each time for our absolute values. Now we're going to... Um, compress it into something different. So this is number four. Okay, so we're going to try two of them. Let's do f of x equals three times the absolute value of x. Three times the absolute value of x. Okay. So did this shift at all? Are we moving it up or down or side to side? Say no. No, we're not. There's no number on the outside being added or subtracted over here. There's nothing on the inside with x moving it left or right. So we keep our vertex at 0, 0. But this time, we're going to count rise over run. So you go 1, 2, 3, and then over 1. And then 1, 2, 3, and over negative 1, because it has to make that V shape. And then you just draw your graph. And it looks, a, yeah, if only it was that easy, right? It looks a lot like the other one, but the other one, a regular graph would go through 1, 1. See, here's your parent function in green. There it is. And so what it's done is it's stretched it, right? The three stretched it. Now, let's do another one of those, but let's put two, two different kind of weird things on the outside. Watch. f of x equals negative 1 half absolute value of x. 
Now, negative people, they're always so, mm, right? So, mm, they're so sad, right? <laughs> you take your... You take your parabola and you turn it upside down. They're so negative and sad. That's what's going to happen here. They're going to be sad. Oh, sideways ones? We're not doing those because those aren't functions, right? Vertical line test. Okay. We will do sideways parabolas, but you're going to have to wait till chapter 10. That's next semester. Do I have you next semester? I don't know. Okay. Did not shift at all. We're not shifting. We're not going left or right or up or down. We're not shifting. We're staying right there at the origin. But this time, our slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 and over 2. Okay? Down 1 and over 2 in this direction also to get the V-shape. So here it is. Look at that. It made it fatter. It's a wider graph now than a regular graph. And it's pointing down because of the negative. So sad, so negative. Okay, last part. We're almost done, guys. It's only been 31 minutes. All right, of me talking nonstop. General form. General form. Is everybody with me? Did you guys just like bail? Are you done? Did, did, did you have enough? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Oh, the general form, or come to the general. the general. Yeah. That one? I don't remember it, but yeah, you're right. Okay, here's the general form. Here's the general form for an absolute value graph with all the stuff. We're going to put it all together. Okay? No, you'll be fine. All right, when it's in general form like this, uh, some things happen. We get a vertex of HK because you're going to shift H to the right and K up. So that's going to be your new vertex. Uh, we're going to have something called the axis of symmetry. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah. Um, a parabola has an axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line at X equals H. Okay. You don't have to memorize any of that stuff. This is just general form, general information. Um, when you get an actual problem... I'll show, you what, I'll show you what you should do, okay? So here we go. Number, what number are we on? I always forget. Six, okay. Ooh, I like that number. Number six, all right. Y equals two times the absolute value of X minus three plus four. All right, so you're gonna get a problem like this on your quiz for Monday. We're gonna practice this tomorrow too. And I'm gonna ask you, what is the vertex? What is the AOS, axis of symmetry, and please graph it. Maybe I won't say please, but I'll just say graph it. <coughs> okay, do you don't need to memorize a bunch of stuff, like HK and axis of symmetry, whatever. Start by graphing this thing, okay? If I wanted to graph this, I start with the shift. And I'm going to start with my basic parent function, which starts at 0, 0. And I need to shift this 3 to the what? 3 to the right and 4 up. Guess what? That's my vertex. So I can write that right there in that spot. Three, four. Okay? Now, graph it using its slope. I put slopes in quotations because it's not really slope, but it is. And we're going to go rise two, rise two, and run one in each direction. So there's my graph. Okay. This graph has an axis of symmetry. It's the line that splits it in half. It's a vertical line. And you know vertical lines because we did them at the beginning of this chapter. This vertical line is the line x equals, and what is x equal? 3. There you go. You didn't have to memorize a thing. You just do it, and then you got all the answers. All right, yeah? Wait, wait, wait. Axis of symmetry always going to be the x value of your vertex? It always is, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people like to memorize that. But you can see it right there. All right, you try one. I'm going to come around and see how well you do. Y equals 2 thirds X plus 3 uh, minus 1. All right, so you're going to do the whole thing. Vertex, axis of symmetry, graph. The whole thing. 
All right, here we go. I'm going to go three to the left and one down. So there's my vertex. Vertex is negative three, negative one. How many of you have that so far? Really good. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and count up to and over one, two, three. And you draw it. I hope yours looks nicer than mine. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And your axis of symmetry. Now, I will not accept you writing negative 3. Okay? I won't accept that. You know why? What if I gave you a graph and said, draw negative 3? You'd be like, what? I, I can't draw negative 3 on a graph. I can draw x equals negative 3. See what I mean? See the difference? I don't like that. That bothered me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Last question, number eight. No, it keeps going and going. All right, last one. Here we go. I'll, I'll walk you through this one. Now, we're going to go the opposite way. I'm, I'm going to give you a graph, and you're going to tell me the equation of it. Okay? So here we go. Go to one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Put a dot right there. Put a dot right there at 3, 5, and then count down 2 and over 1 in each direction. And there it is. Okay, that's down 2 and over 1 in each direction. And I want you to write the equation of that absolute value function. Okay? It's hard. No, you can't? No, I can't. It's going backwards. It's thinking, you know, reverse. Last one, though. This is the last problem. That wasn't so bad, though. I thought it was going to be really bad. All right, here we go. Uh, first of all, my vertex went, it's 3 to the right and 5 up. So I'm going to write x minus 3. Okay, be careful. Remember, it's the opposite direction, left and right. And then plus 5. And then let's look at this. This is down 2 and over 1, so this would be negative 2. And it's facing it. down. You got it? Who got that? Wow, Fraley? No, I'm sorry. <laughs>